Can you hear me? Hello. Can you guys hear me? I think we may be having some technical difficulties because I cannot hear anything on this end. Can you hear me now? I can. Okay, great. Awesome. Okay, that is great. All right. We're good to go now. <laughs> yes. Super excited to have you. Uh, I gave a little introduction about you, but however, I always like to uh, allow our guests to give an introduction about themselves as well as uh, what's new, uh, what they're doing right now, uh, currently, uh, especially amid a pandemic and right. among other things. And I just got your message where you said some of the questions that we're asking, you have already addressed, but of course we want on your blog and on your website. So we definitely want to give that information out. And we also, of course, want to go live with that information as well. Because some, okay. people, some people don't read. And, and so we want to hear them in all ways to, to give information. However, we got to give, give it to them. That's right. what we're going to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. okay. So you want me to start by telling a little bit about myself? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so my name is Jocelyn. I am a licensed clinical social worker, and I have been in private practice since 2013, but in this particular space since 2017. I was working from home um, prior to, to coming in and having a brick and mortar office. Um, in, at uh, Premier Counseling, we right now have five therapists, on staff and a psychologist on staff. So we're growing and we are super excited about all of the things that we're able to offer um, here at Premier Counseling. Um, I am originally from Bay Springs, Mississippi, so I'm not a Coast native. I've been here for 17 years though, so I consider um, go for home. Um, and I am involved in several different organizations, community organizations, I'm a founder of the founder of Pink Lotus Project. It's a, a nonprofit organization that empowers women and mentors girls. So we have a group of young ladies who we have taken under our wing um, to mentor and, and give experience is what we really try to do is, is provide them with any kind of educational experience, like college tours, and things of that nature. Awesome. Um, we're gonna jump right to it into it and um, i'm going to kind of check because i know some people are at work and they may have questions and some people are a little shy uh, and and we want to meet people where they are when Absolutely. they talk about mental health issues and and we will meet you where you are because we care about you and Absolutely. i believe i believe i got someone on here that has that same heart as we share um we'll meet you where you are and we understand that um, 
but we do want you to know that you shouldn't be afraid. But if you are, like we said, we'll definitely meet you where you are. Um, so we may get some questions. I, so if you see me on my phone, I'm usually okay, no text and messenger because some people, you know, have questions. Now, okay. this is something I recently got within five minutes, five or 10 minutes ago. And um, someone I share with different people because I care for an elderly parent, my sister and my cousin. And one of the questions I just received was how do uh, people navigate the stressors of you? You want to take care of that elderly parent. Right. Um, and but there are so many demands and you're trying to keep your immune system healthy, your mental space healthy. But the reality is they they depend on you. And so right. you have to make sure you get the meals. You have, have to make sure that you understand that their mental health is important, their physical health, all of those. So how do you navigate that? And I know I just threw that one at you. So. No problem. Um, so when you're a caregiver, that's a stressor in itself. Um, because again, you are responsible for caregiving for that person. You're responsible for their livelihood. So that's a lot of stress in itself. So I would look to, fortunately, you have, you spoke about um, some family members that you have that are able to assist. Um, so I would encourage individuals to check their, uh, the person they're caring for insurance plan to see if respite services are available, if sitter services are available. It may not be, you may not be able to do the 24 hour sitter or, you know, the entire day, but some type of respite so that you can get out, you can take care of the things that you need to take care of. You can make sure that you are um, staying healthy, that you're able to just enjoy some me time as well. So then really uh, not a way to get around, not caring for someone when you're a caregiver, but putting some other people in place that can assist you yeah. is probably the way to go or reaching out to some other agencies that may be able to provide some respite services for you. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I know a lot of loving people who are <laughs> at home with their families and they love their families. So I want to put that disclaimer out there. <laughs> But as people are physically social uh, distancing themselves, we've had parents and ch children suffering that cabin fever mm -hmm. and they're needing some time and space. Mom is like, I'm about to hurt somebody up in here. And and jokingly, I say that, but, you know, but honestly, they had that time, whether it was a commute to work, uh, staggering times when people came in to the home, you know, they had that that time and space where they can separate themselves. But now people are out of school, working home remotely and just trying to navigate, uh, not that they don't love each other, um, but just having that, okay, I need a minute. I need a breather. Mm -hmm. um, so I would suggest um, using separate rooms. If your children okay. are, are, are old enough to go right. to their areas, that it's really going to be really important for parents during this time to schedule time um, that's super important. So if you're working and your children are a little bit older and they're able to go to their respective areas, then you need to schedule that time and say, hey, I'm taking, um, you know, 30 minutes to read a book, to go sit outside. And this is just mom's time. And I need you guys to respect mom's time. And then after I have my time, then we'll do something together as a family. Um, going in separate rooms, I know that really sounds bad sometimes, but sometimes you need to just separate, you know, especially when things get, you know, and you're like tired of looking at each other and, you know, nobody wants to watch the same thing at the same time. So, you know, having to kind of separate for a couple of, of hours and then come back together to do some type of family, um, family time. Going outside, you know, on your porch doing some outside things. It's a beautiful day today. Um, the wind is blowing. It's a little breezy, but it's a beautiful day. Kind of going outside and sitting on your patio, um, playing some games outside so that you don't get overwhelmed with being in the house. There's only so much cleaning, only so much um, Netflix that you can do or snacking that you can do before it becomes a little harmful to you or you start to just, you know, not want to do anything and so then you retreat to your bed and that can cause if you're already suffering from depression or 
or any other type of mental illness that can you know exacerbate your symptoms so trying to keep yourself busy and doing moving around and doing some things and scheduling time is going to be really important that's awesome you touched on two things already within your statement um and and i had this conversation with someone who had younger kids and she said well i can't just leave them and i right. said but you do the bath so mm -hmm. doing your bath or doing your shower um mm -hmm. do some practicing some free um deep and i'm not a, a professional i do counseling through christian counseling but i'm not a licensed professional i have my chaplaincy and so we we learn things that way but I said, if you can just take that shower and take some deep breath right. and, you know, you have to preserve and reserve what you can, how you can. And I understand you have little small children, so you you can't just separate yourself, but you do have to build yourself up because she, she doesn't have the option to have daycare or, um, you know, some some other family members to assist her so those so if you can add to that and uh, i know i'm this is i'm loading stuff on it however i have also had a friend that said girl i have gained seven pounds mm -hmm. <laughs> this week yes she said mindless eating and she said if i listen to the news long enough i just my mind just start going and i'm eating and i said so let's have that person that's alone so again if you are alone a schedule is going to be your best friend because what you're going to want to do if you have small children is to get them up and children love routine so it's important that you come up with a routine get them up get them dressed um have your little school time or whatever you're going to do with them have nap time. So when they are having nap time, then that's your time to sit, relax, do what you need to do. Maybe you can nap at the same time if that's what you need to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so really scheduling time and keeping them on a schedule is going to be important. It's really important that you just don't let them run, run about time, do whatever they want to do. And, you know, they're not keeping a schedule. And I know for my daughter, when she was young, staying up to midnight was like the best thing ever. So like during this time when you're at home and they're at home, maybe keeping them on their school schedule or maybe, you know, rewarding them in some way for giving you some time or for doing their schoolwork and saying, hey, you know, instead of going to bed at eight, you'll go at 830 tonight because you still have to do your schoolwork or we still have to practice your ABCs or your counting or whatever they're working on in daycare. So you yeah. still have to keep some type of routine and schedule, even with the smaller ones. And making sure that you also plan outside time with them if that's available for you. If you're in a home, then taking them out back to have their recess or their outside time. Um, if you're in an apartment, maybe going out to um, the swing if that's available or just taking them for a walk around the apartment complex so that they can get out some of that energy as well. Um, so just kind of, you have to, right now with everything that's going on, we really have to be creative. Yes. Thank you for those wise nuggets. Those are really good. Um, now, you know, this is coming up. Um, uncertainty was the norm for some people before this. Um, so they are adjusting for finances, stretched mm -hmm. employment, disruption yep. in patterns. You just touched on that. Um, mm -hmm. And people are not so quickly to adjust to change or they're not as fluid to change their new norm. So could you, um, and you kind of touched on that with the planning and being creative, but mm -hmm. are there any uh, other nuggets of wisdom that you can share with us? For the finances. audience of, yes, um, mm -hmm. understanding the stressors of finances, so um, understanding that we, have, nobody has ever encountered before. I know not in my lifetime. Um, mm -hmm. Hurricane Katrina is probably the closest that we've gotten to this type of, um, circumstance. So we really have to look at things and take a step back for a moment, um, pull things out, pull out your pen and paper, even though we're in the time of electronics, I love to pull out pen and paper because it just makes me feel good to be able to write some things down. Um, one thing that I would have to say that I have to catch myself as well, do not overspend because you're bored. Don't go online. Yeah. 
start to purchase, purchase, purchase new clothes, jewelry, new shoes, because you're bored. You still have to maintain your budget. So even in this time of uncertainty, pulling out your budget and seeing what that looks like now, that you may be out of work, laid off from work, um, you may be have a reduction in hours. So what is your budget going to look like now in this time of uncertainty? So you definitely don't want to overspend during a time because you're bored. And we do it all the time. I do it. I'm bored. I've been online yesterday, I think, just looking through different websites. Oh, I like this. Oh, I like it. I have to remind, pull myself back and remind myself that this is not a time to overspend. This is a time to be a little bit more cautious with your finances because we really don't know what's going to happen you know, to us financially moving forward. So we do have to be a little bit more reserved on it. Um, taking advantage of forbearances. Um, there are a lot of offers that are going on right now with banks. If you are home, you have a mortgage, calling your financial institution to see if they're offering a 90 day forbearance. Um, calling your, um, if you have a car loan, calling your, um, your car loan um, bank to see if they're offering any type of forbearance for you. So being really proactive with that, if you have student loans, I know that there's something in the works with that, but we want to be proactive and react. So we want to go ahead and give uh, Sister Sally May a call and, you know, already trying to get some people into work to see what's going on. So you definitely want to be proactive. You don't want to wait until you're in a huge bind before you start to do some things that are going to help you to stretch during this time, because we're all going to have to take some opportunity to kind of stretch ourselves during this time. Some of your gifts are uh, visionary and vision boards. You're excellent with um, giving people the big picture. And one of the things that you just mentioned, which triggered this question, you said you like to do pen and paper and you, you like to plan. And the Bible says, write the vision, make it plain. Absolutely. And sometimes, sometimes we just um limit that to oh i want to be um the next beyonce or or uh, get get called to be on a show or whatever the case may be or you know my career advancement my career path or whatever but this is a good time to set a vision board for your family and your family unit and like you just went over the budget um getting your finances together, having a vision board. So can you uh, share some good visionary um, boards and visionary um, tips Tips that would be great at this time? So this is a, a wonderful opportunity to pull out your vision board. I know most people do them in December and January, but people forget that your vision board is a moving document. It should never stay the same throughout the year. You should be adding, taking away as you uh, reach goals and things of that nature. You should also have a task sheet. You know, you can, you can have a vision board, but it's really not going to work for you unless you have a task sheet with dates. So this is a perfect opportunity to pull out that task sheet and see where you are in your goal setting and see what needs to be adjusted. If you haven't done a vision board, this is a perfect opportunity for you to sit with your family and do a vision board, update your vision board, and kind of readjust and realign with what your goals are. So it's really about now everybody has to, unfortunately, you have to, or fortunately, sit still. And that's something that we don't do often. Uh, we don't sit still enough. And just sit in our, have the opportunity to sit in our feelings and think about what's the next step. This is a perfect opportunity if you've always wanted to start a business. This is the time that you have to sit down and write out a business plan. This is a perfect opportunity for you to sit down and think about how to rearrange your budget if you're already in business this year. How can you be creative to keep your clients? So this is the time that you can use to really strategize with some things because we're forced to sit still. Amazing, great answer. Um, and, and you got my wheels just turning. I'm pretty sure you have our audience wheel, wheels turning as well. While home, how do we keep our marriages and relationships healthy? And I think you touched basis on that when you said separate and it's good to remain that healthy um, space. But 
multiple ways that we can keep our marriages and our children relationships and um, of course being in close quarters. Right. So having some time to um, still maybe have date night. And so that's going to be on your schedule so that your children are aware that, you know, even if they're small, mommy and daddy are in the kitchen and we're going to enjoy dinner together alone. We're going to let the kids eat first and then we're going to enjoy our meal at the dinner table alone so we can have some type of date night. Or maybe after the children have gone to bed, then you find something on TV that you've been wanting to, to watch. And then you can have movie night and you have to be creative with that. You know, pop some popcorn. Um, well, can't really order pizza, but maybe make pizza. And that can be your dinner for your children. And then you and your spouse can also take advantage of that. Um, awesome. Everybody is very close right now. And we're all trying to work. We're all trying to figure things out. Stress is high. So allowing your spouse to have their separate space is also very important. That you don't want to crowd people because we're already, you know, in this small space together. So allow your spouse to have their breaks, their lunch break if they want to take it outside or if they want to, you know, be out. If you have a swimming pool or whatever, if they want to be out by the pool or if they want to be out on the patio or the front porch, if they want to be out and they want to take, encourage your spouse to be able to have that alone time as well. So they can then uh, enjoy the time that they're spending with you and it's not all stress related. So I'm going to go on the opposite, opposite side of the spectrum. Sometimes, and I know because I have a um, very teenage and a little older son, 22 and uh, 17, and sometimes we're spaced apart. Mm -hmm. And I do want to take and, and this is before COVID. Sometimes I would do a, a dinner and everybody has to put their cell phones on the table. Yes. And we would do that for 30 minutes till about two hours. Mm -hmm. The conversations become very organic, although it may be a planned dinner or a planned game or whatever, but it becomes very organic and you get to learn different things that you didn't even know what was going mm -hmm. on with your child. Right. Um, and, and at first, I'm going to be honest, they're like, oh, we're doing this again. But each time I've done that, you know, we discovered things about one another, talked about things, talked about things that were on their hearts, things that they've seen that I otherwise would have not known. So right. how do you uh, promote those things on the other side of the spectrum where you have the daughter or son that sits in the room all the time and plays the video games and don't have that connection with you. Right. So she gives us tips about that. Right. So if you have, I have a teenager, she's 17. Um, so she is very tech savvy. And so she mm -hmm. can just like anything from her phone. So mm -hmm. I have to encourage her to come out and you can do that by being creative. Maybe you can make invitations for dinner and then have everyone to get dressed and come out to your fancy dinner for the night. And, and you know, if you're in, at a five-star restaurant that you're going to create in your home, then nobody's allowed to have their cell phones. And maybe you can then um, plan a dinner in a movie. So I think right now, Pinterest is our friend, finding some ideas on, on dinners, encouraging your children to maybe, if they're teens and they're old enough, to prepare, everybody take a night to prepare dinner. And then, you know, then you will have an opportunity to assist them in the kitchen if they need it. And so while they're cooking dinner, it's an awesome time for you to have some one-on-one -on -one with that particular child. You know, it's not everybody. So then you're able to still have everybody to come and sit, in, in, to come and sit at the table, but you're able to have the one-on-one -on -one time with each child that's preparing dinner that night. And if you have small ones, maybe assisting them in preparing desserts for the dinner. And having that one-on-one -on -one time with them and having some rules that make fun and have some rules about it. Nobody can come in the kitchen while they're, you know, while the chef and the sous chef are working during this time. Everybody has to be getting dressed. So being really creative about what that looks like. Um, and if you have children who are out of town, inviting them to dinner virtually, using FaceTime, using Zoom and things of that nature, having them to sit down with their dinner while you're sitting down with your dinner and you having conversation with them virtually um, and having dinner with them virtually. So that's also a wonderful idea. Oh, those are amazing ideas. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I am taking up on that five star. 
And I do have uh, grandchildren and a son that lives in Texas. So I, I want to do the virtual dinner as well. That's thank you. Thank you for that. Um, do you have any other suggestions or things that have come across amid this crisis um, that you think that we need to address here at this time during this interview? I think that one of the things that we really need to address and look at is um, limiting your time on social media. If you already suffer from anxiety or you already have symptoms of anxiety, watching the news um, on social media, everybody's posting about COVID, like everybody has an opinion. And so limiting the time, um, being respectful to others as well, they have a different opinion. Than you. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to get into a Facebook battle with someone about what's happening or what they should be doing or what they're not doing or social distancing. You want to just make sure that you're, you're doing your part and maybe all the sharing things that are coming from the CDC or any other credible sources when you're sharing um, things. Definitely um, taking time for yourself. You know, anxiety craves stability. So making sure that your own routine, if you suffer from anxiety, that you're, you're making sure that you're on a routine every day so that you can schedule a time to watch the news and that you're not overwatching. If you were working outside of the home and you were only watching the news at 7 in the morning and at 6 at night, then those are the times that you need to only watch the news at 7 in the morning and at 6 at night. Don't leave your TV on MSNBC all day because that's going to create some symptoms of anxiety for anybody right now because we're all our level of stress is heightened because of what we're going through so and you know remembering that trauma for everyone looks different you know anxiety for everyone looks different so what you feel like someone should be doing right now or even in your household if you're a, a anxious person in your household right now and everybody else is just relaxed sometimes you can be on you know your anxiety can be heightened because you're not understanding why nobody else is panicking you know, or why your family members are not panicking. Or if you're on the other end of the spectrum and you're not panicking and everybody else is panicking. So you have to kind of pace yourself with those type of things um, and making sure that you're being polite and making sure that you're being understanding of others during this time. Because trauma for everybody, um, anxiety for everybody looks different. Yes. I definitely want everybody to know your practice, um, your website, your blogs, books that you've written, co-authored. I want you to give them the whole gamut, run it down, uh, share your social media handles, because we want licensed um, individuals that have credibility that are able to speak to, like you said, different traumas, different anxiety, different vision and so forth and so on. So we really want to share that information. So um, I'm a premier professional counseling services. We are located downtown Gulfport. We are um, working right now on a very modified schedule. So for clients mm -hmm. who are having technical difficulties or not able to get to speak with us virtually, we are offering some very modified sessions. So. You know, we're asking uh, individuals to come at their appointment time. We're trying not to overcrowd our office. We're sanitizing. We're deep cleaning. We're doing things of that nature. We're trying to move people over to virtual appointments. So we are taking new clients. We are taking new clients virtually. Um, right now, a lot of the insurance is relaxing that. So um, just about everybody is able to get a virtual session right now. So if you are interested in just getting some support, we're here for you. Um, our social media handle on Facebook for Premier Professional Counseling Services. Um, our Instagram handle is Premier Counseling Services. We try to post updates as often as we can about what's going on in our office and making sure that we're keeping our clients and those who are interested in our services abreast of what's happening with us in the office. Um, my, my social media handles are just Jocelyn on Facebook and just Jocelyn, just underscore Jocelyn underscore LCSW on Instagram. And it's the same for Twitter. Um, I am, you know, again, we're still seeing clients. We're still trying to be of service to our clients. If you're engaged with, with Premier or if you're engaged with any other mental health provider. So this is bigger than just Premier Counseling. If you're engaged with any other mental health provider, there are several on the coast that you're feeling anxiety. Reach out to somebody. 
Don't just sit in your home and suffer in silence. So while it may not be premier that you choose any other um, mental health agency, there are several here on the coast that are offering telehealth sessions. So get connected with somebody that can help you um, navigate this because again, this is something that we've never seen in our lifetime. So we need to make sure that we are um, supporting one another and and helping each other and, and giving a helping hand. So for my books, this is a wonderful time to journal. Wonderful time to start journaling. <laughs> journaling with Purpose is a journal that I created uh, last year and it's uh, full of prompts. It's about 100 pages. It's full of prompts for you. And this is, again, a wonderful time to start journaling your feelings, your thoughts. Um, especially if you're working with someone in mental health, we all encourage journaling to kind of help you on your journey. It's really important that you're able to see in your own words how you're progressing or your lack of progression or where you're stuck so that you can share those things with your therapist. Um, new out right now is our new book, Mind Your Mental Health, 21 Stories of Growth and Healing. This is our very new baby. Um, I have copies at my office. You can visit my website at www.jocelyngavinlane.com and it's spelled J-O-C-E-L-Y-N, Gavin, G-A-V-I-N, Lane, L-A-N-E, dot com. And books are available. We are still shipping them out. It's also an Amazon bestseller. Yay! All of the stories are unique. And every woman can relate to, to one of these stories, at least in this book, if not all of them. We've had, I had someone as, um, last night give me a call and say, you know, I figured out that my daughter was really suffering because I had an opportunity to read this book. So again, this is 21 individual stories of professional women of color who have suffered in some way with some type of mental health issue. So we have that available. It's a really good read. Um, and you're able to connect with these women. All women are able to connect with these women on some level. So that's available as well. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. I'm so glad we have you tapped into you as a resource and that you have printed material or resources. And I appreciate you joining us today. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. God bless. God bless you as well.